the last dance documentary oh that was a good one um i'm sure some of you have already started watching it but there's this really cool documentary available now on netflix called the last dance it follows the um the last season that Michael Jordan played for the Chicago or the yeah, last season or was it the last season that Phil Jackson was there either way it was the season that they wanted to complete the triple three the six NBA championships in a row now again I'm only talking from a point of view I'm not a big NBA fan uh, I just see the clips here and around but I'm not I don't really follow anybody don't know the rules all that sort of shit but I assume it was the documentary they filmed in the run up to them trying to complete uh, six championships in a row and this is during you know Mark Jordan's heyday now coming it, coming it, coming into it for, as a no, as a non uh, NBA fan but also knowing the, the power of Michael Jordan and what he meant to that organisation the one thing that kind of stuck out to me was you know of course you know his greatness i think that's something that you'd have to kind of you know there's another way that you can watch that and not be reminded of just how good this guy was um from the way that people talk about him to the way he's carries himself to just the way he plays right i think that's the one thing you notice about thing even, even if you're not interested in the actual sport or in the you know in the field of creativity or arts you know if somebody's you know playing the cello or they're you know doing ballet or they're in a play or an actor on on the big screen even if you're not a fan of those mediums right you can really you can notice when somebody's good at something that they're doing and when they're really bad or when they're just exceptional and just you know otherworldly you can see it even if you're not a fan i'm sure it's just, i remember doing this i remember that happening to me when i was a bit older and i used to like coach kids in like primary school and stuff and you start to know it straight i remember when we were younger we'd be like oh how come we didn't get trials of big teams and then you hear managers say oh we can spot talent from like you know the ages of like four upwards you'd be like no nah, no way man I'm, i was sick i'm sick now i'm sick now but then when you start coaching younger kids especially kids under five years old you start to realize no you know why they can tell now because you can spot a kid that's like six years old right couldn't the way he controls a ball the way he uh the, this balance he has on it the way he runs his choice of passes the way he hits the ball instinctively it's just something you just can't teach it's just kind of you know god-given talent or god-given um kind of uh, uh orientation towards that certain thing um and it is it's just you have it or you don't have it so you can definitely see that when you watch the this last dance documentary on netflix you can just definitely see even if you're not a fan of the nba you can just see how good the guy is compared to everyone else he's up against and especially when you are a kind of casual fan of the nba like i am or you don't really you know i don't want to say casual just like you know whenever it's on you might watch it you can definitely notice the people he played with in this era you can see them next to each other and you can see how easily or how ordinary he's making them look and then you realize how good they are and you're like oh now i get it it's like when you watch messi right it's all it's all well and good him skipping past you know some lowly team like sort of ego something or come to the burn about um sorry come to a new camp and you're skipping past players you don't really have any context but then when Barca go and play a team that you are familiar with seeing play week in week out who are smashing your league to pieces right imagine if you're in a Premier League and Liverpool are beating everybody left right and centre 5-0 and suddenly you see Messi do the same thing he does to Celta Vigo to a Liverpool players like, okay cool now I get why he's so highly regarded and that's what happens watching this so you just realise how much of a you know demon he is in that regard you also see how much of a you know that winning mentality and that kind of competitive spirit is just it's just everything when it comes to true champions and i think that the good thing i liked about it was that you know jordan of course when he was at his pump he was it was away from social media it was away from having smartphones so there were rumors you did hear stories about him being a bit of a dick but for the most part we only had to concentrate on the stuff he did in the court he didn't have to really care about his extra extra marital life the stuff he did outside of it his friends his connections what he might have got in trouble with he didn't really necessarily care because there wasn't enough context there wasn't enough juice in that story you know where the press going to get that information from who's really going to give a shit maybe those gossip sites weren't as big as they were nowadays right i'll, I'll say gossip sites are probably more bigger than maybe those gossip magazines from back in the day right they just you know people love to go on them just to even get because they're now the lands of blurred you know before a gossip site would just be like straight rumors and now it's like inf it's like news you know when someone wants to do a press release they'll send it out to a shade room or something and they'll also talk about what they might have heard on the scene 
so those things happen so I think because of that he was able just to concentrate on basketball and we were able just to concentrate on the stuff that he did on the court and he was able just to kind of deliver um, especially just the mentality he had on that main stage of that clip of him playing against is it the Boston Celtics like fucking hell they still lost but he what, he puts up like 49 and then 62 points or some shit in the following game you're like god almighty man that guy was good and it was just the aggression the variety in his play it was just absolutely freakish to watch um i like the section that they focused on scotty pippen because i think he was somebody that a lot of people said was didn't, didn't get the praise he deserved that's a great thing i think about basketball which is similar to what we're seeing now in football maybe because the prices and transfers have just gone sky high we're seeing a lot of especially in the Bundesliga you see a lot of uh, football directors essentially building out the team or the squad it with a particular goal or image in mind and then fitting the manager to that particular way of style of play right before it would just be like you get a manager in charge you give them a blank checkbook they sign who they want and then if that doesn't work you get someone else and they just rinse and repeat but it ends up happening you end up ending up with the squad like united a few seasons back where you just end up with you know various players from different regimes who play a different way who have different sort of skill sets different attributes it doesn't necessarily work but if you're able to have this continuity plan with, with or without the people at the top without maybe the manager or the coach it helps so basketball does that quite well while they you know they'll draft in a really big player someone really talented someone really mercurial and then they'll kind of put the pieces around that player in order to make sure they get the best of it out of him and it's the best for the team and i think that's what he, um the guy that jerry Krause guy who kind of comes out of it looking like a villain to be honest but he did really well in that regard he was able to kind of recognize that they have this special one in a, once in a lifetime talent in jordan and it just fit the pieces around him and someone like Pippen got a lot of um undeserved hate because he was injured i guess for most of the time but um he also was the, i think uh jordan never says it right he's one of his best teammates ever um you need that balance in the team so that was really cool um of course the jerry Krause thing just goes to show that you know sometimes <laughs> pencil pushers and gatekeepers are usually the worst people aren't they really but i think part of it part of the reason why he suffered a lot and he got a lot of negativity towards him i think there's even one shot where they're coming to collect their championship medals and shit or their rings and everyone gets called out by the announcer and then once his name gets called out before the players everyone boos and as soon as it's phil jackson's name everyone cheers it's so you know that must have really got to him the fact that you know he knows that without him i think because not since jordan came before he's he started his reign but he basically plucked phil jackson out from obscurity got the pieces in around jordan you know the second season or the couple seasons after that to kind of make sure they were a championship winning team so he has every right to feel as if like he's an integral part of the organization but he tried to you know he was so you know maybe obsessed with his ego or so willing or so ready to get credit that he forgot that you know especially in sports man like people naturally have a bit of a hesitance to give any kind of organizational person you know person head office any kind of praise anyway really in it because they don't have the best reputation so when you try and go to war with one of the you know once in a lifetime talents like it just doesn't make any sense in it like i think he should have conceded defeat even if he wasn't defeated so earlier on just to get more out of it i don't understand the idea of like telling phil jackson oh no matter even if you win 82 games in a row you're gonna get sacked that is insane but it, it's same with football in it like they do it all the time but it's just such a weird thing like and especially because you're banking on it going right because it's good if you do that and then suddenly it still goes right and you suddenly somehow able to pluck another jordan out from the woodworks and you're able to get another team to kind of go on another unprecedented run with another championship seventh right that's when it works but that is there's the probability of that working uh, is not high so he was banking on a lot for that to happen and of course it didn't happen in the end of the day um and then you know he passes away and everyone still thinks he's a villain right so he didn't necessarily get the praise he deserved in that regard but you know what can you do um and then again i just think it's inspiring to just see how highly what he was spoken about jordan that is from his uh peers and people that played with him i think the level of respect the fact that they were giving him his flowers and telling him he was otherworldly i think one person described him as a god you know that happened to be playing basketball right he wasn't human and I think that really puts into context and really lets you understand why a lot of older folk who are around when 
who got to see Jordan play live, whether it is in person or on TV, and also got to see LeBron play live, um, don't necessarily entertain the arguments of those guys being of LeBron being better. It's just not a, a conversation. I think everyone's willing to say, hey, LeBron's a better dude, human, right? Especially on the outside from what we know. Because I'm sure, again, I'm not too sure about being a better human when you're just showing us what you want to show us and stuff, you know? You never know. I'm always of the thinking that people are a lot more dangerous than they let on. I think people are a bit more malevolent than they want it to be known. I think they can get away with more evil naughty stuff they would do it so the fact that LeBron screens the whistle doesn't really say much it's probably you know we probably get more of you probably get a more fair accurate, accurate representation of his character based on what he done with the whole China stuff than you would do with how he treats his kids and you know the whole Tucker or Tuesday stuff but regardless he obviously he's of course a better human being right than Jordan I think we can definitely agree on that um but you'd be hard pressed to find anyone especially somebody that's not a Knicks fan or somebody you know who got you know a team that got demolished by Jordan every time they played but you'd be hard to find anyone that's gonna really say that LeBron's better and I think that is really testament to just how god level this guy is of playing the sport and again it just even whatever industry you're in it, it can't help but inspire you to just see this level of greatness to see how far he was able to take things it's just inspiring to see man and i like how they drop in at two episodes at a time per week on so on netflix i didn't know it was going to be on netflix i thought it was going to be something i had to kind of scrounge around on espn to find or get on a torrent but it's available now on netflix to watch i definitely recommend checking out even if you're not a fan of a basketball i think these documentaries especially the ones they do in the states on basketball and american football they have a really good way of kind of narrate of kind of st storytelling that even i think my mum would really like to watch it like do you know what i mean like they have a good way of doing it. i think some of the documentaries we get on football are very much geared at the person that you know sits in weather spins all day in fucking hula hoops isn't it but these documentaries are they appeal to anybody i think you can stumble upon it just watch it and it's a good life lessons to learn from it um the stuff about the 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 cocaine cowboys whatever they were or the crews that they had how they were known for getting on it and getting drunk and shit i'm not surprised i think we're going to probably hear a lot more of that down the line i'm not sure how much i buy the idea of jordan being 20 years old walking into a room and seeing you know people doing all sorts of manner of stuff and inside to walk back into his room and go away no it's not for me but it also could be true that could be a good origin story that could be a, a representation of who he is as a human that he was willing to sacrifice the early part of his career be clean as a whistle because now you know of course if you watch the tv if you actually, if you actually watch it there's a there's him sitting down talking to the camera and he's got a tall tall glass of fucking i think it's one of these pictures right he's got a tall tall glass of whiskey i think this is one of the go so yeah, he's got that glass of whiskey it's full it's dark there's hardly any mixer in that he's got a cigar that he's talking very very freely so whoever did that in the show too it was a good it's a good move that regard it to get him to open up a bit but it was quite cool that he was able to sacrifice the early parts of his career especially when he was young to be the greatest in the world so that he can then enjoy the fruits of it later on he doesn't look the best now don't get me wrong he's got his eyes i don't know why they're all yellow and shit he's a bit bloated but he's a bigger he's an older dude now right you know and i'm assuming people that height that kind of physicality the way he was pushing it to, to the limit it's going to take its toll on your body but i just i don't know man i just there's something admirable about that you know sacrificing you know all the vices that exist for young athletes in the early part of your career so that you could become you know the best that there ever was and you know now you know have many years on people are still talking about you in such glowing terms no one was willing to accept that somebody like a lebron james is even close to anywhere near you it's a really cool thing to see and i think for again any sport or any kind of field you're in you can't help but marvel at it and hope that you can replicate it in any kind of minuscule way that you can but i think and it's also the kind the really cool bit is that he wasn't necessarily regarded as somebody that was highly sought after in college that's what i didn't know i thought he was just like you know one of these um kind of uh god-given talents from when he was young it wasn't he had to work hard at being the way he was it was something that he kind of uh trained himself to be he kind of willed it into existence as opposed to just came out of the womb and he was shooting threes um he wasn't an all-rounder that he was of course he had parts of his game that was stellar but he wasn't the jordan that we know now when he was in college which is so awesome to see so practice makes perfect of course but definitely check it out if you haven't seen it the last dance is available now on netflix